Okay, next up on Big Talk from Small Libraries 2017 is uh, Susan Rice. And um, she is from the, oh, I forgot it, Natarita Community Library? Yeah. It is. I pronounced it right. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> and um, we invited her on. She is um, Best Small Library in America winner. The library is from 2011. Um, that may sound a little odd to some of you considering we are in 2017 right now. Um, traditionally here at Big Talk from Small Libraries, we have tried to um, invite on to the conference the current year's winner of the Big Talk from, or of the Best Small Library in America Award, um, which comes from Library Journal, um, co-sponsored by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. However, this year they have, for 2017, the award has been put on hiatus. Um, they are reevaluating the criteria for it, so um, there is no winner for 2017 at the moment, but we we do have about 10 years worth of previous winners. So our first big talk from small libraries was in 2012. So I went to 2011 right the year before because we weren't able to have her on because it was the year before and asked Susan to come on and talk to us about their library who was that winner. So she's going to tell us about what's going on at her library and this award and other things they've been doing and yeah, share everything that's going on in Colorado. Are you guys, I'll ask you first, because we are here. I have blowing snow going sideways outside. Do you guys have any of this weather <laughs> happening there today? <laughs> well, yesterday, yesterday, was, uh, yeah. yesterday I was in Telluride, which is 60 miles away, and it was snowing like crazy all the way down the mountain until oh, yes. I got um, 30 miles from home. So, um, yes, we do have snow, but not much here. We're considered the banana belt of Colorado in Natarita. Oh, really? Okay. I had never heard that. But... <laughs> mm -hmm. Nice. All right. Well, I'll just hand over to you to take it away and, and tell us Great. about your library and what you've been doing. Great. Krista, thank you very much, and thanks for the introduction. Um, we are. This is Welcome to uh, Natarita, and we don't consider ourselves rural. We actually consider ourselves frontier because we are in a boom and bust energy extra extraction com um, economy, especially uranium. It's bust, 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 bust. We have nothing going on right now. Our large, we are the largest Superfund site in the U.S., and that is only about th uh, 20 miles away from us. And at the time um, of our awards, we had a higher population than what we do now. Although, even though that's happening, that our population is de declining, we have more library cards issued than we have res residents four times more library cards issued than what we have um, uh, uh, what we have people in our community. Our community is small but it is Natarita and Nucleus is five miles away so and Paradox is 30 miles away. Norwood is 30 miles away so we have a lot of libraries within our area. But economically, we are deprived, but our community is rich in community. And that means that if someone has health issues, we're right there for them. If anyone has a broken down car or they need something, anything, um, our community is right there. Statistically, um, we, per capita, our income is over half is over half the state average, and that means that we make less than half of the average Coloradian. So we, we're not, ex um, and uranium, of course, is, uh, we have coal now, but uranium was one of our um, biggest uh, funders in our community. Um, not anymore. And coal and also our power plant are going away with uh, by 2022. We have a lot going on in our community right now. So the first, um, the very first award that we won was a color from the Colorado of Association of Libraries, and we have a, a straw bale building. It was built in 2009. We received this award in 2010. And it was for the outside of the building. We have a very forward-thinking director. And so we have straw bale and geothermal. Um, this was for the, the catalyst for our future recognition as a library worthy of awards. And this has been given to us for the amazing building that we have. Straw bale is the second largest straw bale 
Library in America actually is the second Strawville Library in America. There are only two. I think the other one is in Washington, and it's 500 square feet. We're 4,500 square feet, but we used to be in 500 square feet. Um, the building will last longer than any of us in town. So the second one oh, I have is... To say Sorry, sorry, that's pretty amazing. I didn't realize that about your library. That is so cool. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. Um, the second award that we won was the Best Small Library in America in 2011, and that was um, given to us, um, and I don't know what they're, how they're going to revamp this grant, but it what, it's what goes on inside the library, what's inside of our building, so our programming, our books. When we started in, um, I started 11 years ago at this library, and our collection um, was about 1976. And since then, we have brought it up to um, where we need to be in today, in 2017. Um, we try to cater to the needs of our community, which was one of the reasons why we won this award. And with three part-time employees now, and uh, or two part-time employees now, and one full-time. But at the time of this award, we did have three part-time employees, and then myself is full-time. Um, we had four children's program weekly, 18 total monthly. So we did things like after-school um, homework program. Um, we had coloring contests, very simplistic things. Um, computer classes for adults and it, at this award we were able to go to Philadelphia and receive this award at the Public Library Association conference which happens every um, two years <coughs> excuse me uh, the third um, we won the the third award was for museum and library service and that also was what went in side our library. Um, five of these are given each year to a museum and to, a, to museums and to libraries. We went to Washington DC to the White House to receive this reward and you know I encourage encourage all of you to apply for this award. It's, it's, um, we had a grant writer at the time, but I looked at it and I could have even written this. I mean, it, it, you know, if you, if you know and are passionate about your library, you could really sell this library to, uh, for the National Medal, um, which is a budget line on our national budget. Also in, for this award, we had a community member that was honored. Um, you can see Jamie, the littlest one in there. She was a person, a volunteer in our library who came to us in order to pay for her food stamps. Well, she did such a good job when there was an opening, I was able to hire her. Um, and this award is all about changing lives, and that's what we do in the Natarita Community Library. It's all about changing lives. Our director is, if you're facing your computer to your left, um, uh, and you know this was um, given to us at the White House, which is one of the coolest things that we've ever been able to do. Um, and then what I want to really talk about is after the awards, and especially after the Best Small Library in America. Um, after the award, this is what happened to us. We were able to collaborate with many more organizations in our areas, and this is up to 100 miles away. Um, than, than before. And our relationship with the school district was always good. Um, this is a picture of our kids at the school. Um, uh, we are, this one is, <laughs> we're doing um, on a bear hunt. Uh, and then grantors and what happened with our grantors. So first we're going to talk about collaboration. Keep calm and collaborate with whomever, whenever, just make it work. And that's what we did. Um, 
so as far as 60 miles away, we wanted to collaborate. People started wanting to collaborate with us. Actually, 100 miles, but people wanted to co collaborate with us uh, to bring in different programmings to our community. Anyone who calls, we try to collaborate with. Um, if somebody, we had somebody call the other day from uh, Grand Junction, which is 120 miles away, and they wanted to know if I could get together a few people in the library to for them to talk about um, land management. And that's exactly what I did. I called a few people, called a few ranchers, got them into the library. So that's a collaboration. Um, collaboration doesn't happen overnight. It happens through awareness. And the awards we won were definitely the awareness that we needed throughout the state of Colorado. And it happens also through an open mind. Can we make this work with only two part-time and one full-time employees? And we say, yes, we can. The, um, um, one of the organizations that we began after the awards to collaborate with is called, it's called AMBOSES, which is a support organization designed for local school districts to bring in um, physical therapy, OT, speech therapy, and through them, we, um, we became a support group because we brought in, through them, the pyramid model, which is in our schools, zero through five years old. It's in our schools. And so we, we became, um, uh, the, a library was invited to um, workshops to learn the program and implement it in our early uh, literacy programs. The most identifiable difference is the consistency in our language with the preschool. And it has been a challenge because what uh, promoting social and emotional well-being in infants and young children, part of their pyramid is um, positive language. So instead of saying no running in the library, we um, changed it to use your walking feed in the library. And it has been reported to us, even at the clerks in the, in the grocery store are losing, using the pro, um, positive language um, and changing their negativity, negative language to positive. This is, all you have to do is Google this pyramid model, and it's really a fabulous um, uh, model to use in kids. The other thing we house in our... Um, in our library is um, the Pinhead Institute, and that's up in Telluride. And they bring in STEM, STEAM, and I know there's another acronym and I can't think of it at this time. Um, but, you know, we're able, um, they came to us and said, What can we do for you? And I said, We need STEM. Um, you know, that's something that at, in the very beginning, after the awards, we didn't have a lot of grants that were applicable to STEM or STEAM. Um, so we, um, uh, you know, we began the science projects through them. So with this, we've also been able to bring in the first LEGO League. And let me tell you how this happens. We, we got robotics into our library. But what happened is a teacher of principal came to me from the elementary middle school about four years ago and said, we really want to bring this. There's a grant in the Western Slope. We really want to bring this into the schools. I can't get anyone interested in it. The teachers are just totally slammed. So what can you do to help us? Well, I started talking about it the, fir the fourth year. The third year, um, I started talking, it with, talking about it with the Pinhead Institute. I couldn't, get, I couldn't get it started. The third year, uh, we talked again about it. I did get it started, but we did not go to um, competition. And the fourth year, this year, we actually had two. We have a, uh, in Paradox, which is 30 miles away, we have a, it's part of our district, but it's a charter school, and we got a team. We got a team together from the charter school and a team together from our elementary and middle school 
we did middle school kids, um, and we got those together, and both of us, both teams, the first time, had won an award. It just takes patience, and I am not a patient person. I want things to happen in, a, in this library immediately, but boy, I have um, really been able to overcome that and be patient with what um, uh, comes up for us. We also um, we also um, collaborate with the Telluride Institution, which is an outdoor program, uh, a nature program. Um, we we go we take the and this is not a library program. It is this particular program is a school program. So the Telluride Institute comes into the school. Well, they asked me. For a couple of years, and that would be me on the right because I am so excited I made it last year. I made it snowshoeing up to the top of this mountain, and uh, we stay overnight. So what I talked about with my director is, may I use some of my time, and we are a small library, remember that. I, I do have, I make the time to do this. May we go in and support and help um, and be outreach and not have the kids notice us by me going and doing some of um, the programs with them. Sometimes I go on um, uh, uh, when the kids go um, visit the museum. I go with them. If I can, if I can be on a school trip or with the Telluride Institute, this particular program, I not only do the winter program, but I do the summer program down by the river too. And this is all educational, but I'm there in order to talk about books or in the summer program, I bring a couple of books. At this program, what I do is, who better than a librarian to tell ghost stories? And that's what I do. And, and I'm telling you, these kids are just hysterical. They can't believe that uh, a librarian would talk about the monsters that might be out in the dark. So, uh, and what this does for our library is it gives us um, an opportunity to be in relationship with um, our kids. The other thing is we um, house the Early Childhood Council. And that's a regional council, and we house that here. And, be, and we also do literacy for little ones. And so we have a place at this round table. Um, we, and, and this is how we, we, we keep in touch with um, the organizations throughout the um, entire region. Um, it is. You know, it is really amazing um, what we can do with how little we have. Um, so remember, it's it's really about um, uh, making things work in order to be aware, in order to be recognized in your community, community and regional areas. The other thing that we do is we do collaborate with our um, local libraries, and we, as um, in this area, this is the most amazing thing. We have 30 miles away, you can see on the map to your right, Norwood is 30 miles away, um, Nucla is 5 miles away from Natarita. And Paradox, which is off the chart, but 30 miles away from Natarita also. We have our district libraries. That is, we have a library in our, um, in, uh, in our high school, in our grade school. We have one um, in Paradox. Our district has the public library in Paradox and helps support the children's library at their school also. And we collaborate with all of them, with all of them. Um, uh, Norwood and um, Natarita collaborate for the summer reading program. We do an hour and a half for zero to second grade in our library for our um, summer reading program because we believe that it's all about experience. 
it's what they can experience. So I'll give you an example. We have yoga mats, and somebody gave them to us because they weren't using them anymore, or um, I think one was ripped in the corner. And we buy at the dollar store, and remember, the dollar store is your friend. We put shaving cream on the mat, and they ice skate in the summertime. That's all about experience. And then at the end of the mat, we have a bucket, um, uh, a wash bucket, for them to wash their feet off and um, uh, uh, towels. We also, we also, um, the school allows us to do a lot of, um, uh, so we, excuse me, we meet in, we have a community room now um, and regional meetings uh, from various organizations from 100 miles away ask for us to use our community room. Um, like if the county commissioners need to have a meeting about what's going on in the county, we house them. Anything we can, we house. Um, the school district allows us to do outreach. We do a Spanish reading program. We do a, um, a Spanish. Uh, we do a Spanish singing program where we have, through grants, because none of us speak Spanish here, we found somebody in the community who can speak Spanish, and she goes into. She touches 64 to 75 kids weekly, preschool through second grade, in teaching them Spanish. We take our outreach, our early literacy program, into other, um, to the school district in order um, for, you know, to do a 40-minute um, early literacy program for them. And since we've been in the new building, um, I've known that robotics and programming were part of the world our children are living in. And it so through the Pinhead Institute, through First Lego League, um, we were able to write a grant, which I'll talk about more about in the grantors, uh, for robot robotics in our um, in our library. Uh, we're very fortunate with that. So um, so that's some of the things that happen after the grants. Um, and this is what we, our criteria for collaborating. How many staff hours, what will it cost, and does it fit into our mission? Educate, enlighten, enrich, and entertain. Um, uh, as you see in this picture, that was, uh, I, we knew in the library that a bunch of, um, oh, a, a car club was coming into our community. So what we did is we asked a bunch of kids to come into our library and the and this was just on the spur of the moment. Um, we told the kids get off the community get off the community the computers and come outside and um, our kids were talking to all of the owners of these cars and asking them about it and so when there's an opportunity to enlighten, entertain, enrich, and educate these kids, we'll do it in any way that we can. Because again, it's all about experience, what they can experience. These kids don't have the opportunity to talk to people with cars like this unless we're the, um, but we are the catalyst that help them do this. And even if it's on the spur of the moment. I talked about our school district and our outreach, and what I really wanted to impress upon this is that we have a solid relationship with them. Even with our uh, robotics, the first Lego League, our school, because we were across the street from it, allowed us to take kids out of school for two and a half hours a week and start the first Lego League. The charter school had that outreach actually in their school. Um, so I just wanted to make that clear that um, our relationship is solid with them. And, and, and I even, I take out the, um, uh, twice a year, I take the 
superintendent of our school out to lunch so we can connect and figure out what we as a library can do for them. Um, and then we have our grants. Any grant in your area, write it. Statewide grants, write it. State library grants, write it. National grants, write as many as you can, even to get books into your library. We wrote, um, yeah, and we've been turned down for a lot of grants, too, because we are not big enough. So I need to make a case, since we don't have a grant writer anymore, I need to make a case um, for grants for grants in our library. I need to make that case for them um, so even though we have small numbers that we are still worthy of, of um, funding. Uh, and, and that is, um, there's many ways that, uh, that, I, that I can do that. Like, um, for instance, I just found out through a uh, uh, community grantor, I went yesterday to a, uh, a meeting, and, and I go to meetings as far as 100 miles away because usually it's the Natarita Public, uh, uh, Community Library that is represented represented at these meetings that are regional meetings. Um, not a lot of other organizations do this. And again, it's because our director finds it advantageous to our library for me to be a presence um, with the kids, with grantors, uh, with um, whomever I can be in our area. And and that way, I, I, in fact, um, somebody from 100 miles away came into our library the other day and said, um, I heard about you through, I can't remember the name of the organization, and they just wanted to come in and make themselves known that um, that they're around. And if we, oh, I know what it, it was, um, it was an organization that is trying to figure out how many kids in our area are homeless. And um, I found out through a meeting that I went to yesterday that last, um, our high school graduation class of last year, 30% of those kids were homeless at graduation. So that is huge for grantors that we, we have those statistics. Or um, another statistic is in from 2010 to 2015, Natarita's population has decreased by 25%. That's huge in a grant. Another thing is um, because that doesn't make our children any less, it just makes our numbers a little less. Um, so it's important for, for um, grantors to know what your situation is, um, what your statistics are, and your situation uh, in your library. Um, so let's see. Um, you know, and, and because we have... Um, we're very fortunate in this area. 60 miles away is Telluride, which is a ski resort. So there are very, there's two very um, large organizations that fund children's programming in our area. And one is the Telluride Foundation, and the other one is the Just for Kids Foundation. And those grantors are gracious enough to um, grant money in our area. Uh, we're a bedroom community to Telluride, which is mean we are service-based economy to Telluride. So they see that and and they know that we need um, uh, we need a, we we need funding in order to keep up our organizations. Um, we also get grants from Colorado funders all over the state. So we find what is um, appropriate. Um, 
and uh, appropriate for our library and go after those grants. Um, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> the most incredible thing that happened to us was actually in 2016, and uh, there was an organization in the Four Corners area. Four Corners meaning where the four states meet, and we're very close to that. We're about um, oh, probably 95 to 100 miles away from the Four Corners area. And this grantor found out about us through our awards and asked us if we would like to write a grant and what is needed in our community or in our library. Well, what I went after is robotics because it is robotics that is the life of these kids beyond high school. Um, you know, and, and we allow and we allow gaming in our um, library because of that, because that is their life. Um, so um, through that, we were able to bring in um, uh, we we were able to ask for seventy five hundred dollars in robotics. At the end of the year, they, they called us and said, we have another $2,500. Would you like it? Well, are we going to say no? But what that gave, of course not. You know, again, in our, in our library, we say, yes, we can um, because we are so small. So what that gave us is now we're able to buy um, plastic containers to put some of these in. Um, robotics in so these so teachers can take them out and use them in their classroom and I'm also going in to do a um, workshop or um, program in the preschool with coding with um, some of these robots that are very basic you know you push forward it's it um, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen them. They're little bumblebees, and and um, you can push the forward to, side to, and these are educational too because they're on a grid, and you can say go to the red dot, and the kids can program it by counting, and go to the red dot, um, and then it can get more complicated after that. Um, so the biggest thing about grantors and what happened to us is the recognition from the awards we received, especially the best small library in America, because it's given us statewide recognition. And this has made us shine as an organization worthy to give grants to. Um, you know, that that is um, uh, one of the one of the things that I really impress upon everyone is go after whatever grants you can. Now, um, when we had a grant writer, it was a lot easier. Um, but as you all know, through um, the um, lack of funding for libraries, not actually funding, but I mean the tax base, we're a, um, a district, so we're a special district in um, our county and we are tax based and um, you know we have again our forward thinking um, director we 10 percent of our budget actually comes from the ta the um, tax base over in Montrose County which is our county seat and that's a hundred miles away from us so um, you know, we were very fortunate um, to have such a great director, Paul Palladino. Um, and um, I want to talk a little bit in conclusion of this is this is what we do. We follow our dreams, and that was put up there by my um, daughter, the dog hot dog, I mean the taco, because um, she thought it was funny, and I should be more funny in my presentation. Um, but to me, this is really serious stuff. You know, my, uh, this library is, and, and what we do in this library, and the changing of lives, and, um, you know, I can tell you a couple, uh, we make this happen. 
about eight years ago, we had a kid come into the library that was hungry, and we didn't know about it because he didn't tell us. He would go back into our community room and steal food. Well, I found him stealing it, and he was so embarrassed. And I said, no, no, don't ever be embarrassed about that. Just let me know, and I'll have something ready for you. Um, that's who we are in this library. Now I'm, um, uh, you know, we follow our dreams uh, for the building and for our, um, and you know, we follow our dreams in what the community wants. People are connecting together in our in our library, and that's what we always wanted. We wanted this to be a community center. We wanted um, this to be. People coming in and talking to each other. I mean, we've, and you really only, we've, um, I've been in this job for 11 years. In 2009, I said, we moved into this larger building. Our, we've only had, well, actually two times, people have shushed me in our library, and only once did somebody say, this is too loud of a library for me and then we direct them into our study room um, for them to work but we are a lot loud library because we are the community center in our community um, in Natarita that's what we wanted we want people to connect we want to be in relationship with our patrons and that's exactly what we're doing um, and especially now with our population depleted by 25%, we continue to bring um, programming into this library. Um, our future plans, we've reinstated, we did a tea party years ago and this year we just reinstated it and so we have a tea party for girls and a superhero which is happening today with our boys and we have about 35 people um, parents and children that come to these 35 to 40 people that's huge in a community of 416 people uh, we do a family night um, and you might think that these things cost a lot of money. They don't. For the tea party, if we just have cookies and lemonade and games for those kids, um, a craft for them, that's all we do. But these little girls dress up, and, and that gives more people. We had that last weekend. More people came into our library who we haven't seen before. And these are families that have a lot of resources, but we still want them into our library. We do a family night. We do a craft with families and uh, that they can do together. And of course, during that night, we always promote reading. So, um, but during that, we also, food brings people into our library. You know, our motto is feed them and they will come. Well, we've had up to 75 people um, at our family night um, with families actually doing a craft together. It's been so much fun, and we always promote reading. Uh, we still do computer tutoring and classes. Our tutoring, if somebody needs, um, like right now, we have one of our employees is tutoring for a half an hour a week. Um, a woman who had a stroke and can't hold her yarn very well and she wants to learn how to crochet. Yes, we can. We helped her out. Um, the state, our state of Colorado has, um, it's called One Book for Colorado and our governor gives out all four-year-olds uh, books. So what we did is in order to encourage families to join in, um, we give out these books at a story concert. Now that story concert doesn't cost us anything but um, a few cookies and lemonade. That's another thing, you know, we just do that. Um, and we have had, uh, you know, we just do hot dogs and hamburgers and um, uh, we bought a grill years ago, uh, you know, after the uh, Best Small Library in America. And so we feed people too, that's a pickle, chips and a hot dog and and 
we're good. Um, and we do a concert, a story concert, and uh, we ask officials and teachers to read when we give out our four-year-old books. Um, we have Wacky Wednesdays, a two, a two o'clock release. So we have uh, snacks for those kids at two o'clock. And they come in and make stuff or play with robots or we have an old time um, uh, erector set we set up, uh, blocks for the little ones, um, uh, Kiva maples, look it up if you don't know what they are. They're pretty inexpensive but they encourage engineering skills, which is one of the 21st century skills that grantors like to see. Um, and we do some STEAM and STEM uh, um, during the, that time also. Um, we have a makerspace. All we did with our makerspace was put up a sign on a table in front of our uh, circulation desk and we put adult coloring out there, kids coloring pages. Uh, stringing beads, plastic for the little ones, and beads from um, for the older kids, um, for teens. Adults even participate. Remember, Pinterest is your friend, and of course, every librarian knows that. And sometimes we put out our extra preschool crafts on the table to encourage moms to help children put them together if they hadn't been to our early literacy program, and that gives them gives us. Um, a commercial to be able to promote that. We got a grant for a 3D printer. Um, we and now we need a grant for a. Uh, we want the community to be involved in the 3D printer. So I'm looking for a grant for the camera that you can take a picture and it'll do the dimensions of something. Um, a community member came to us. Um, you know, one of our. Uh, retired community members came to us and said, I need this little latch that's on my door. And I said, we have just the thing for you, a 3D printer. But now, of course, we need the um, camera that will take the dimensions of the parts needed for cars or household parts. Um, we have the pr printer and filament from a grant, and this summer we'll begin programs for children. Uh, we also do a fundraiser. This is simplistic. This is really simple. It doesn't sound like it is, but it really is. We do a murder mystery dinner theater. In order for us to give back to the community, we grant a grant from our, um, our library too. So the community has been involved in this for 11 years, and it's just fun for adults. Some people bring their children, which I'm not happy about because I can get pretty um, crazy during that time, acting as somebody else. Uh, but we use Susan Haley Productions, which is, um, she only charges $25 a night, and most of it, it's a basic script and then it's um, improv. So we do a dinner for that for our community also. Uh, and we have our summer reading programs, which is um, um, really a uh, you know, we do as much as we can with these kids for as long as we can. Also, I try and do a middle school fun night out um, every two months. And that, I just do things like Minute to Win or um, we bought a black light a couple of years ago. And so we do things with our black light, um, uh, glow in the dark paint, making masks. Um, or pictures um, that will glow in the dark. Very simple things, um, uh, stacking cups, we, we do that. Uh, very simple things that don't cost a lot of money because obviously we don't have a lot of money. So thank you. Am I ready for a questions and, ans and uh, answer period? Uh, yes, yes. Hello, Susan. <laughs> did, did I go 50 minutes yes. or am I talking too fast? No, you did. Oh, no, you did great. It's 11.45. You've got plenty of time for some questions, which we do have. <laughs> um, great. Oh, so you, it sounds like you got a lot of things you're doing there, which is very similar to other libraries, of course. Oh, um, yeah. I do like the, the fact that getting the awards has... Um, had an effect on you getting more awards and grants and being able to, you know, like you said, that makes you more um, uh, attractive 
to other places wanting to help you out with things, that that does actually have an effect, uh, and a lasting effect. And I'm hoping, I know I said in the beginning that they're not, there isn't an award this year. I do hope that they, they do have the award come back so it can help other small libraries um, yeah. continue with what they're doing. Um, let's see, we have a whole bunch of questions that came in. Let's start. Um, first up, we have, we have about five minutes here. We can um, go through a bunch of these. Um, do you charge for your community room? Um, you mentioned we that you have only use charge, it. We charge ask for, for that. Oh. Are you ready? Yep, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, not for organizations that are nonprofits or government. Um, we do ask for a donation. Um, for like birthday parties or if somebody wants to do, um, I'm going to pick a name, uh, uh, the essential oils for doTERRA, we have somebody that comes in and does um, a program on uh, essential oils, but that's also a sale. So we just ask for donations. We don't have a set fee. And the reason why we did that is because in our area, um, you know, some parents can afford five dollars when they have their birthday party at our library, and some can afford twenty. And I, we didn't want to make it a set fee. It's what you can give. Mm -hmm. That's great. That that makes it much more welcoming. And it sounds like that is one of your main criteria is to be welcoming to anyone and everyone who needs to use the library for whatever they need it for. That is exactly yeah. right. Now, do you have a separate children's room? I mean, in the, inside the library, is there any other separate rooms that can be used, or is it just the library in one big space and then the community room? We have we have two study rooms. Um, uh, so, um, and those it, the small study uh, one of the study rooms can also be used for a small group of people, and then we have the community room, and then um, uh, our director wanted another room where people could just go in there and use their com um, computers. Well, nobody was using it, so what we did was we we used it as storage now. <laughs> yeah. There's never enough storage in a library. Yes. <laughs> Um, okay. Um, talking about doing things, outreach and whatnot, do you have a board or are there board members that could do some of the meetings and outreach programs or are you the only public face of the library? Um, and is there other people that uh, someone else asked, do you have volunteers? Um, we, have a, we have very few volunteers. We have two. But we also take people when um, Oh, the um, when somebody needs to do community service through the courts, the courts, mm -hmm. we also um, encourage the courts to send them our way, um, because that helps us definitely. Mm -hmm. So the and for about it, our board is we don't have a board specifically for our library it's the Montrose Regional Library District Board so they come over and have a meeting once a year with us so we can tell okay. them what we've been doing but your library um, doesn't have its own because I know you're part of the, the group there yeah we are we're part we're, we're you're right we are part of um, a main library so we're a branch um, which is advantageous to us I totally understand that um, so they only come here once a, a year. The, but what we, and I've tried for 11 years now to start a Friends of the Library, and that has been really difficult. So I think that's what I'll do during my retirement. <laughs> is, is I'll, I'll try and start that when, when I no longer um, am an employee. Um, but yes, we do have, um, we've got two people that are, one that works almost 30 hours a week, and we are so grateful for that, because um, that gives us another person to uh, put away books and um, whatever else needs to be done in our library. Mm -hmm. okay. Did that um, answer that question? I think so. I hope so. Okay. <laughs> um, let's see what else. Uh, your population change, that's an interesting question. Someone wants to know what was the population before um, the awards and what is it now? Has there been a big change in any of that? Um, who's yeah. who actually is local in town? Right, right. So 
Um, yes, um, we, we, from 2015, um, we're down by 25%. So um, why this is happening is because there are no jobs in our area and young families are moving away. And, and we have a lot to think about. We have a lot to think about in this community. Our largest employer, which is the coal mine and our power plant, will not be uh, in existence after 2022. So we have to um, uh, look and be active in our community to see if we can't bring other things into um, our area, some other industries. Um, you know, again, we're a boom and bust. It's bust, 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 and that's um, you know that that's very hard on our um, organizations here. So through the Telluride Foundation, through the Telluride Foundation, we um, um, uh, have been able to um, um, oh, bring to our community um, some insight into what we can do um, to bring industries into our area and um, and then also a um, the um, we also have a organization in town that it, West End economical economic development and they are bringing they brought they just brought in and bought through the state a and grants a building so now and it's across the street from us which is really convenient where <laughs> this year we're going to do some uh, heritage crafting and so we're going to be able to rent that space for $25 which isn't a lot but it, it does come out of our budget in order to teach people how to make bread um, <laughs> Yeah, so we have a whole kitchen in order to do that across the street from us. So, um, so, and then also um, soap making with lye. Um, so it gives us, and we'll do that in our library, but it gives us another place to go to in order to help families um, or to bring programming into our community. Awesome. We also okay. have a garden. We have a garden, and that didn't take much. We just dug a hole and dug a couple of holes in, <laughs> in our landscaping and uh, mm -hmm. started some tomatoes. And people in our um, in our neighborhood, which is the entire community, because there's probably um, eight streets in our entire uh, um, town, and most of them are still... Um, dirt streets. <laughs> um, so That's rural. Yep. Yeah, isn't that funny? <laughs> so Sounds familiar to things we have here in Nebraska. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's similar to that. It's similar to that. I think um, you know. So you all know what rural and frontier is. Um, mm -hmm. So we just planted a, some peppers, some tomatoes, and people come and pick them as they need them. Okay, I think I'll just do one last question. We are running a little long here, and I we need to get into our lunchtime um, uh, lightning rounds. Um, so if you didn't get your question asked, um, we do have a lot coming in, so we do have to you know pick and choose here. Um, but Susan, you'll be able to reach out to her at the library um, with anything else you want to know about. One last thing, good question. What resources do you use to find about these grants that you applied for? How did you find out they exist, that they were out there for you? Well, um Again, uh, we were very fortunate to have a um, uh, a grant writer at the time that found out about our the grants that we had had to build the building. Mm -hmm. um, but um, so it it is online. You know, I do I do a lot of searching for libraries online. Um, and don't forget about uh, LSTA too. They have a lot of grants right. that come out for small uh, for libraries, sometimes larger than us, sometimes um, small. Um, uh, so um, we ha and then we're very fortunate to have grantors within um, our area too. So you know, um, our state library sends out grant opportunities. Um, through 
to all of our libraries along this around the state and we've gotten some um, we've gotten books we've gotten um, again the robotics we've gotten which is huge for us is like um, crayons pencils and I buy large amounts of that so they last in fact um, the last time we had to buy supplies and we do small supplies but the last time we did supplies I had a grant for supplies and we're five years ago we're just starting to go through all those crayons and pencils and you know we <laughs> buy glue all the time and <laughs> paper yeah so yeah there's lots of things out there just keep your eyes open and look for keep them your eyes open. Um, Look and uh, look for other presentations that have been done about this, about grants. Um, there's lots of uh, webinars and things out there. I know we've done a few things through here at the Library Commission right. too. Mm -hmm. And um, maker spaces yeah. are huge. Yes. There's a lot of money out there right now for maker spaces. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. I think we'll wrap okay. it up here so we can get into Thank you so much, Susan. That was great. I'm glad you were able to share with us what's been going on at your library there since you know the the Best Small Library in America Award and. Uh, you, you guys are growing strong. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much for allowing me to do this. It was an honor. Yeah, you're welcome. All right. Thank you.